Hello everyone, this is Frempel here, and welcome to my Minecraft test world. I've had a very positive response from my previous video featuring the Minecart Rapid Transit line, so in the meantime I've been making some improvements to my automated station design, and I'll be showing those off in this video. These buildings you see in front of you make up the completed version 2.0 of my station, so let's go inside and take a look. Alright, so here we are on the new station platform. Uh, the first change I'll mention is that I've totally revamped the cart request mechanism. It used to be right here in front of the cart hopper, but now I've moved it ne right down here, right next to the boarding area, making it much more convenient. I've also replaced the pressure plate with a simple button. When I push the button, this cart ready indicator above will light up, and a cart will arrive in the designated spot right down here. I'll demonstrate it right now. and things went exactly as I described it. You also probably noticed the ding sound when the indicator lit up. That's from a note block I put somewhere back there to provide an additional audio cue for the player. Also, just like uh, the old request mechanism, if, you t if I try to request more cards while the indicator is lit, like this, nothing happens. You can only start requesting cards again once somebody stands on this pressure plate down here which happens to occur when somebody boards the cart. Uh, so alright, so we're currently inside the side platform station design on my test world. Now I'm going to board the cart and travel a very short distance to the center platform station, which you can kind of see outside over there. And this is just to show any new viewers how uh, carts arrive and depart uh, on my stations. So here we go. So we're about to arrive now. I need to hit a button on the side here. There we go. And here, here we are. So I'm going to get out of my cart. And just like before, the cart is automatically taken away and up back into this station's cart hopper. Okay, so the most uh, important uh, improvement I've made to this station is the implementation of Blaze's amazing door booster design. Um, before this, I was using perpetual motion boosters, which worked well, except sometimes they stopped moving if you went up far enough away from them and came back later. That's because when the chunk that the booster is in gets unloaded and then reloaded again. Also, I've heard that perpetual motion boosters don't work very well in survival multiplayer. Now, we don't need to worry about any of that. With door boosters, the cart will only move when needed, just like this one here. It, it works particularly well with my arrival booster set up here. With the old booster, the cart would come around, pick up the pick up the player's cart, and go up up to up to the top, and then fall back down the same way and back into the perpetual boosting cycle. With door boosters, the cart doesn't stop here at the top; instead, turns around and falls uh, conveniently right onto the door here. You can barely see, and it's ready to ready to, ready to be boosted again. I'll uh, run this booster by pushing this conveniently placed button so you can see it in action. And I'll do it one more time. Alright, so it's essentially going in a loop. It goes down, around, picks up the cart, up, and back again. So, um, yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, so I'm using eight door boosters in each station, uh, four, four, four in each direction. Uh, two of those four are used to take away arriving carts up to the hopper, just as we saw. Uh, one on the left here, and one on the right. And if I exit here, the third booster is... There's one way down there, and this is the one that takes the carts from the hopper up to the boarding zone. And the fourth booster is just behind this wall here, and that's the one that uh, launches departing carts, as you just saw right there. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think this station is, with the door boosters, I think this station is pretty much as ready as it will ever be for a survival multiplayer. I've released the MC Edit schematics for the station, so feel free to try the station out in your SMP world. And if you do use them, please do let me know, because I am curious if and how people are using my designs in practice. 
Anyway, that's all about door boosters. Uh, the last major improvement I've made to this station is a way to deal with extra carts when the cart hopper is already full. So as you can see in this hopper, it's clearly completely full. And now I'm going to try to load an additional cart using this manual launch track here. And I'll show you what happens. I have to also chase it too. You can barely see it. Oh, there it goes. All right, so it, hard, it was hard to see, but since the cart was going so faster than us, but what happened was the cart tried to enter the hopper, but it bounced back off because there was a cart already inside. The cart's momentum then pushed it back into this cactus here, turning it into an item, which you see right there. I've got one cactus here and also another one for arriving carts. So this is one. This is the one for runaway carts, and this the other one is for arriving carts. Now, so I know it seems like I'm wasting a cart since no one's ever going to pick this up, but at the very least, this will prevent any overflow ca carts from blocking the loading track that comes up here, and that leads up to hoppers. So later on, when this hopper becomes not full, when people start requesting carts, then at least uh, pe the carts can still be loaded into other more additional carts can still be loaded into the hopper and not get stuck by and getting jammed up by some loose carts. Now I was considering putting in some way of delivering the overclock carts back to the player at the platforms way over there, perhaps extending the track or sending the items down a waterway of some sort. But there are two reasons why I decided not to do this, at least for now. First, when a cart hits a cactus the item pops out in a random direction. This means sometimes the item will pop out safely, like that one there, and other times it will actually hit the cactus again, and uh, the item will be totally destroyed. The second reason is that I don't have enough space inside here to put in the extended track or waterway. I'm already up to the wall here. So I could extend the wall of the station outward, but that would uh, make the outside walls uh, ugly and asymmetrical. All right. And so that's my um, solution to cart hopper overflow. Um, there's one last thing I'd like to show you. Um, it's actually outside, so I'm going to just give me a moment to get to the exit here. Go down. Oh, uh, one other thing I'll mention, uh, the center platform station now has a concourse. It's actually now a true mirror of the side platform station. Uh, this was uh, Thanks to uh, uh, CodeWire, who makes MC Edit, he made a recent update, uh, which uh, added a mirror tool. So thank you, CodeWire, for saving me a lot of time. All right, so here we are outside. The last thing I want to show you, uh, here we have the uh, center platform station and the side platform station. And over here, I've got these large, ominous, evil-looking stone cubes of death. Actually, these are the underground versions of my station. That one over there is a side platform variation, and this one over here is a center platform. Inside these cubes is an exact copy of the elevated stations that we just saw, uh, with all the redstone and minecart, same, same redstone and minecart mechanics. All I did was I copied the elevated station schematic, uh, removed all the uh, outside glass and torches, and uh, filled in the outer parts of stone, so it reformed a rectangular cube. This makes it easier to import an MC Edit since um, underground you need to turn on the copy air option when importing, and since it's a solid cube, there's no extra air pockets uh, that get imported. Uh, one thing I'll note is this station is designed to be truly underground. We're talking at least 15 to 20 blocks below sea level. So if you're trying to build a station that's close, close to ground level, you'll probably want to use the elevated version. So now, so yeah, so now with this version of the station, uh, you can now build your very own subway, or combine them with the elevated stations and make a system that goes from above ground to below ground and vice versa. So um. Yep, yeah. uh, that concludes my tour of the new improved station. I've linked to the new MC Edit schematics in the video description. So again, if you do use these stations in your single player world, uh, or especially a multiplayer world, please do let me know. In the future, I hopefully will have some time to make some tutorial videos on how to imp import my station using MC Edit, or maybe a more classic technical tutorial where I explain all how all of the parts of the station that I've described come together. But until then, happy Minecrafting, and uh, thanks for watching.